Hey, this is Pops. Welcome to another Saturday Morning Cartoons. Uh, we are rolling along. Hope you're having a good time. Hope you enjoyed the X-Men. Hope you enjoyed the conversation that I had with Matt, reflecting on some of his favorites and that kind of thing. Every week we're trying to add some interesting and new dynamics, trying to explore more and more things, give you some more recommendations. Let me tell you what, there's so many to pick from. And yes, yes, we will have some commercials. We will flash back to some different times and show you some different things. And gosh, isn't it no wonder that we're all so addicted to this wonderful stuff because it was everywhere. So Batman animated series, episode 30, Tiger, Tiger, a Selena Kyle, more than a Catwoman, it's more of a Selena Kyle story as uh, Bruce and Selena are kind of thrust in the middle of a situation, basically a Dr. Moreau experimentation kind of story. So I'm going to pull up some footage here in a moment. Let me give you a general overview, though, um, because at first it does start out with Selena. She's late for the date. Um, She's been hit with a tranquilizer dart. And then, of course, later, because she'd been to the zoo, and then later... As Bruce is sort of like sneaking around, uh, he's he's been he's there when the police are looking around. He finds a dart and it traces him back to this uh, Doctor Dorian. And Doctor Dorian is experimenting on sort of a uh, humanoid uh, gene cloning type of process. And he already has Tigris, who is a creature that's already there. You have Garth, the ape man, he is there. And you have sort of this different things um, that are kind of. Uh, set up as his motivation on, on creating this like perfect person. Obviously, it's totally ripped out of H.G. Wells. Uh, and Catwoman does get injected and become sort of a, you know, hat humanoid version as well. Now, Batman does go and see Dr. Langstrom, which I think is a really great callback to Man Bat. So Matt, Man Bat, again, is, I mean, is a long time ago, guys. Go back to the early episodes of Dr. Langstrom. He's working on um, DNA experimentation and stuff like that himself. And, of course, we get uh, thrust right back into uh, the different world here with uh, Batman trying to attempt to uh, save Selina and this sort of, like, battle that they kind of set up, um, you know, because he's like, you know, you made her a monster. And Selina doesn't really quite know exactly what to do and how to react, right? She's kind of got this human side that is in conflict with her, her mutated version, and she's evidently only one injection away from basically a complete transformation. So I'm going to um, take a little bit of a a commercial break here, a little earlier than usual, I know, but take a little commercial break here, and then we're going to uh, come back. We'll go through the episode, show you the footage, and talk through it a little bit more. So hope you enjoy these commercials. We'll be right back. It's a bomb! The eyes of justice are watching. It's Batman! Riddle me this! Where would a villain like me hide a bomb? Revving up on his high-powered bat cycle, Batman charges to the answer. A giant maze. What flies but has no wings? Fine! And it's running out! Blasting off in his rocket gear. Take that! Turbojet Batman surprises Riddler. Time's up. The eyes of justice, Batman. Figure included with bat cycle. Other figures sold separately. Maze and clock not included. Just when the breakfast eaters thought they were safe. <laughs> Let me finish your breakfast. Sonny's return. Some pedos, Captain. This is a job for Crunch Power. Crunch away! Meanwhile. Come on, spring into action. There's breakfast to be found. So good. Surely breakfast is doomed, unless... Cry up, you soggies. Captain Crunch. Yes, yes, with his Captain Crunch cereal and crunch power that locks delicious sweet taste in, so it's tough to sog out. This is right up your alley. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, we bowled them over. Captain Crunch is a crunchy part of a balanced breakfast. Crunch power! I'll finish it yet! You've got to try this. It's a new host of pudding pie. All chocolatey on top. Yeah? And inside real vanilla pudding. Wow! Mm. Oh, so good. Can I have some? New hostess pudding pies. Mm. A crust you could eat all by itself. Ah. And creamy vanilla pudding inside. Mm. Hostess makes real pudding taste really special. Creep. New Hostess Pudding Pies make real pudding taste really special. Got it, try. Mm. All right, welcome back. I am Pops. We're going to talk about 
uh, Tiger Tiger episode 30. That's right. A Dr. Moreau episode, if you will. And of course, the episode is just, you know, as beautiful as, as so many. Again, the theme for this series was they were going for cinematic. And this episode definitely delivers on that. The animation is just always killer. Just beautiful, um, you know, details. Uh, yeah. Every step of the way. Here's a Dr. Dorian, who I mentioned, a Dr. Moreau of this episode. This is the man ape that's kind of catching everyone. And the experimentation here, Dr. Langston, man bat. And of course, when Batman makes his way to the island and there's sort of like this different um, back and forth over that. And then you can kind of get a good feel for, you know, this version of what he's transformed Selena into. And I will say, I, I don't care for her design. I think her design was probably one of the weaker elements of the animation and the, the, and the conflict kind of plays out there. And then of course, what you do get is Dorian really trying to push the envelope to, um, because he really does think that Tigris and his experiments will create like the perfect person, the perfect creature and a superior race, if you will. Um, and there's, so there's like a competition and of course he cheats right and we can't have anything we can't have any legitimacy so he has this sort of like a cheat situation of course tigris kind of gets the upper hand here let's play a little bit it's great so again action look at that musical score just kind of booms right in takes you right to those moments and selena does start to kind of turn on the situation you can see he's about he does he gets he gets right out of course right um, you just know the net's going to hold him, right? But you end up with this chase sequence and you end up with sort of like a conflict now. Um, they're falling and Batman does what Batman does. He saves him, right? And Selina now as an actual cat woman, as an actual person, is sort of like um, trying to figure out her place in all of this, like trying to figure out her thing. Like, be careful what you ask for, Right. And I will say that Batman arrives in a way and Dorian just can't believe it. He just can't believe that Batman won. He just, he can't get over it. So it sort of sets up this conflict now with Tigris because Tigris is like, well, wait a minute. I, I thought you cared about me and he doesn't care about him. Right. Cause Dorian's like, no, you're, you know, to Dorian, it's like, I made, you know, I made you, I can unmake you. Right. And he real Tigris kind of refers to him as like a father. And he's like, he's kind of on a rampage now. There's like a lab explosion that's going to transpire. And we're going to get all of that. And look at how beautiful some of these cinematic designs are. I just think it's great. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think that her design is probably the weakest element of this episode. But the tensions are all there. Everything is there. Tigris does, of course, the right thing. And she's like, no, I got to go back to being human. He's going to go and live on his own. And that's kind of how it's left. And then the great ending, of course, is. Um, uh, right before that, um, Batman is reciting the actual poem that the Blake poem, William Blake had the poem that kind of inspired the story, right? Kind of inspires um that moment and you get a little bit of that uh, recitation to him. Right. So it, it is really, really great because the poem as an inspiration for this is just very interesting. Like the paradox of, you know, a creature and organism um, being created. And it's like, well, is it, is it proof of a benevolent God? Is it a benevolent creator? You know, did, did, did the person that created me, make me a lamb and if so why is my nature you know towards evil towards doing malice like if 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 i'm created by someone that's supposedly so divine why is there evil in the world those kinds of things those elements are great a lot of depth again go right back to hard to believe it's a kid's show hard to believe it's kids content a lot of depth obviously i would not have gotten or would expect kids to get the blake poem references and get all that this is where it comes into it, it comes into play when you can go back and rewatch things like this explore the poetry behind it explore some of the creative juices that drive such a beautiful piece of art and it's a, it's a, it's a kid's show from the you know the 90s it's just it's freaking amazing so 
I hope you're enjoying this version of uh, uh, our pop perspective on this kind of thing, a rewatch of this sort of classic uh, cartoons. And I will tell you that it's been great doing that with you guys. Hopefully you're enjoying some more cartoons and uh, some different conversations that we're having as well as some of the other commercials kind of flashing back to an era where, you know, we were watching shows like this for hours and subject, subjecting ourselves to cereal and pop tart commercials and McDonald's as well as some toys. So hopefully here's another little dose of some of those advertisements that you enjoy. Thanks again for uh, hanging out with me every Saturday morning. Hopefully you can share some of your thoughts and favorites as well as I pay some tribute to that. And hopefully I will see you next week for another round of Saturday morning cartoons with Pops. Take care, everybody. What do we have here? It's Castle Grayskull. And it's mine. Not so fast, Beastman. He-Man! You can pit He-Man against Beastman playing for the power of Castle Grayskull. You have to put the castle together. Beastman's escaping. What's wrong, Dad? Dad, you saved the castle! Castle Grayskull from the Masters of the Universe collection. He-Man and Beastman each sold separately from Mattel. Prepare yourself for combat. Mortal Kombat action figures. Fight for right in your own tournament of champions. Liu Kang. Johnny Cage. Raiden. Get over here. Sub-Zero. Reptile in the Dragon MK1. Kino on the combat cycle. Mortal Kombat. It's not just a game anymore. Mortal Kombat action figures. Combat cycle comes with Kano. Dragon MK1 comes with Reptile. What do you want to call your cookies, Mr. Keebler? Chips what? Well, let's see. The chips are big. Chips big. Wait, they're soft, too. Chips soft? Our chocolatey chips are so big and soft, they practically melt in your mouth. We put them in cookies made with real eggs and brown sugar. So we need a name that's special. Call them Chips Deluxe. Chips Deluxe. That's special, or my name isn't Cecil B. Deluxe. Chips Deluxe with big, soft, chocolatey chips. Beans and rice, beans and rice. Mama even serves us sometimes twice. But silly as he seems, beans will give you your protein. My good buddy rice is an